overtime. All right. Welcome to Overtime Arcade. I'm your host, Charlie, and one of my hobbies is buying old, broken arcade machines, fixing them up my garage, and then bringing them down here to my home arcade in the basement until they inevitably break down again. I guess, you know, normal people work on classic cars or motorcycles, so this must just be the nerdier version of that. For the most part, these games are relatively simple, early 1980s electronics, uh, designed to be repaired in the field by hand. Uh, my approach to fixing them is a uh, mostly an iterative process of some basic electronic diagnostic troubleshooting, uh, doing a bunch of Googling to find somebody out there who's had the exact same problem in the past, uh, buying a 50 cent part, paying $5 for shipping, waiting a week for it to arrive just to realize I got the wrong 50 cent part, and then starting all over again. Um, so if you're comfortable with a soldering iron and don't mind a lot of repetitive, meticulous work, then this hobby might be something you'd enjoy too. Um, plus the end result, you know, playing a classic arcade machine uh, that you fixed yourself and sharing it with family and friends, well, that's a lot of fun too. Uh, I've got a lot of great memories playing games just like these when I was a kid. You know, virtually every Pizza Hut had a Miss Pac-Man cocktail. Um, I remember a sit-down Spy Hunter arcade machine, you know, cockpit when I was uh, at an arcade on vacation. Uh, a Burger King near me actually had uh, one of those gigantic four-player tech mobile cabinets. Uh, and there was a corner store by my house that had a, a Play Choice 10, just like the one over here. Um, I guess, you know, like most kids my age, uh, I eventually moved on to the NES and Genesis as the arcade sadly went extinct. Um, and at some point I got bit by the retro video game collecting bug, as you can see by the wall of console games uh, over here. Uh, one day I was, you know, looking on Craigslist and I stumbled across an arcade machine for sale at what I thought was a, a reasonable price. Uh, this foot first put the idea in my head of actually owning one of these machines. And uh, as exciting as that idea was, I didn't immediately jump on it because I didn't know anything about owning arcade machines. And I was, you know, honestly a little bit intimidated by the work I expected it would take me uh, to keep them up and running. Uh, years went by and the idea stuck with me. I kept seeing arcade games for sale on Facebook Marketplace and elsewhere, uh, but what really got me to take the plunge was watching restoration and repair videos on YouTube. Uh, one channel in particular called John's Arcade uh, made everything seem really understandable and approachable. John released hundreds of videos and I learned a ton from watching them. He's still out there working on other stuff, uh, but seems to unfortunately be on an indefinite hiatus for making arcade videos. There's a few other really good arcade repair channels currently active on YouTube, like um, Joe's Classic Video Games and uh, Jack Lick's Arcade and Tech Repair Journey. But to me, John's Arcade set the standard. I started this little channel uh, to document my own repairs and restorations. Um, in the hopes of helping others address similar issues, uh, maybe even inspire some of you to dive into this hobby the way John's Arcade inspired me. Um, I'm just a regular guy. I've got a bit of a, a technical background, but I'm certainly not an electronics engineer or anything like that. There's a lot of people out there who know a lot more than me uh, and who have private arcade collections that absolutely dwarf what I've got down here in this, uh, this, this basement arcade. Um, but maybe my videos can, you know, help newcomers learn some of the basics while the real experts can get a good laugh out of my mistakes and we'll all have fun watching the process. So what can you expect from this channel? Um, I'll be repairing and maintaining the games in my home arcade. Uh, you can see some here uh, need some help right away. Um, and, you know, I'll be restoring other new machines that I pick up as uh, projects. Uh, I gravitate towards golden era games uh, from the pre-JAMA era, uh, but I might deviate from that focus from time to time. I like working on monitors, power supplies, control panels. Uh, I'm slowly learning how to work on game boards. Um, I like restoring the cabinets and artwork too, but 
I, I, I'm usually happy to live with the original battle scars in patina rather than replace what's there with a, a pristine reproduction. Uh, I generally try to keep everything as original as possible, um, within reason, of course. Um, so let's take a closer look at what we've got in the lineup uh, right now. So Centipede, super classic game. This was actually uh, the first arcade machine that I bought. Uh, it was a great one for me to start with. Uh, I got it from uh, DJ DNS. I actually bought it from him on Facebook Marketplace, although he sold lots of stuff on uh, the Claw forums over the years. Um, when I got it, it, you know, it was working but needed some TLC. The monitor needed a bunch of adjusting. Uh, the control panel needed a really thorough scrubbing to get everything working right. You know, the trackball is still a little bit wonky. I'd probably like to uh, rebuild that to get it working nice and smooth. But, you know, one of, the, one of my favorite games, um, you know, what can you say? Centipede's a classic. Right here, this is actually a combination, Miss Pac-Man and Galaga. Uh, this was actually released around the year 2001 as the quote-unquote 20th year reunion, class of 1981, for two games that came out in, in 81. Uh, this is, so this is a more, a more modern game or a more modern version of classic games. So, you know, 21 years old at this point. This is the home version. So this has, isn't actually a real coin door. You can't put, it's just a sticker. You can't put coins in there. Um, and this, you know, the control panel here is a little bit different. So it's got a four-way uh, joystick, you know, not a two-way for Galaga. Two buttons over here to start, you know, Miss Pac-Man, one player, two player. Two buttons over here for one player, two player Galaga plus a, a fire button. So it's it's okay. Um, you know, this is actually going to be the first game to to leave uh, the arcade. I'm going to bring it to uh, my office at work. But everyone loves playing these games, and you can actually get the uh, the original Pac-Man is is hidden in this game uh, if you punch in a, a secret code. Uh, next is Tempest. So Tempest is uh, sadly not working right now. Um, it's got a board issue, game board issue. Uh, this was a really, really, really heavy restoration project for me. So this was another one I got off of, uh, DJ DNS. Uh, it was, when I bought it, it was complete, but completely not working. Totally rebuilt the monitor, got that working great. Uh, actually tinkered with the game board until that was working relatively well. Uh, the, uh, you know, this is the cabaret version, so a little bit smaller than what you might be used to seeing. Uh, it's great, though. It's got a full-size monitor, and the controls are, you know, full-size, a little bit narrower. But, um, yeah, uh, the cabinet needed a lot of work. I had to, I think, replace the bottom. I had to chop off the bottom six inches on the sides. Uh, I don't know if you can quite see it in there. Uh, the uh, This doesn't have the cabaret. The Atari cabarets don't have side art. They've got this wood grain vinyl, which I couldn't find a good match for. Um, so, you know, up in a line, in the lineup, you can't quite see, but eventually I want to finish that up and fix the, uh, fix the wood grain side. But yeah, I had this working about 97% of the way, uh, just had some jitter with some of the vectors. Yeah, this is actually, you know, the first ever color vector game. So rather than, you know, most games that, you know, raster monitors that sort of uh, draw pixels on the screen like a typewriter, uh, vector games draw lines directly on the uh, the screen, kind of looking like a 3D wireframe. So um, had a little bit of jitter in those vectors, little wiggles in those lines, and uh, you know couldn't leave well enough alone. Tried to fix it and screwed something up. So uh, fixing that board, bringing that back to life, will be something that we start working on soon. Robotron, what a great game! Twin stick shooter. Left joystick moves your character. Right joystick fires. Uh, what an awesome game. Really hard game. Addicting. Uh, I was looking for this one for a while. Uh, I did eventually find a good deal on Facebook Marketplace. Bought this off a, a woman in New Jersey. Uh, picked it up from her uh, business. She sort of had a, not really a nursery, but they sold like, you know, lawn ornaments, kind of, you know, fountains and, and that kind of stuff. I guess during the 80s, they owned a arcade on the boardwalk in the, you know, Jersey Shore. Uh, this was the one game that they kept when they closed that arcade down, and it was sitting in a barn at that uh, store, that you know, sort of um, outdoor furniture kind of store for years. Totally not working. Uh, uh, full electronic restoration. Rebuilt the monitor. Replaced all the uh, the old um, IDC insulation displacement connectors. Replaced those with uh, Trifurcon header pins. Uh, it really didn't do much cosmetically to it. Sort of, you know, relatively good uh, survivor. 
Uh, probably could have done some more. I don't know if you can see. Uh, got some rust on the coin doors there. But, uh, yeah, awesome, awesome game, Robotron. Donkey Kong, I mean, you know, this is where it all started for Nintendo and Mario. Uh, who doesn't know Donkey Kong? Again, this was a game that I was looking for for a while. I had bought a, uh, a working, well, an uh, uh, unknown condition, actually, Donkey Kong PCB off of eBay years ago. Uh, uh, you know, when I got it, it was, I guess the guy said it was untested or, or wasn't working or, or whatnot, unknown condition. Uh, turned out all it needed was a ribbon cable, you know, the, or the rainbow cable that connects the two boards and that the two board stack version. So once I put that in there, stuck it in my Donkey Kong Jr. behind me, fired it up and it worked great. Um, so from then on, uh, I spent some time looking for a cabinet to put it in, found one out in Ohio, uh, took a long drive out there, pick it up. This actually had been converted to a um, some sort of uh, motorcycle game, uh, superbike or something like that. So had to deconvert it from superbike, um, got an original um, uh, marquee. Um, the bezel had been turned around, so that was still with the game. Uh, I think the seller in Ohio sold me the, the control panel overlay, got reproduction uh, side art from Phoenix Arcade. Darren, thank you very much. It looks awesome. Uh, so yeah, this was a deconversion uh, project. There's some things I didn't do. Uh, didn't fix those doors where the lock bar or the holes where the lock bar was. There's this sort of weird piece of metal. I guess somebody had tried kicking in the front, the kick plate. Uh, they reinforced that with, you know, just a piece of a sheet of metal. But uh, yeah, awesome game. Love this. Never going to get rid of that. Never going to get rid of Donkey Kong. Got a couple pinball machines over here. Now, uh, I don't really work on pinball machines, you know, uh, I can keep them working, you know, basic sort of, you know, maintenance to keep them up and running. Um, but, uh, yeah, I've, I've never quite sort of thought about, um, buying a, uh, a, a, a pinball machine project and working on that, but who knows, maybe one day, uh, the monsters over here, this is actually a relatively modern game. This, I want to say came out in 2019. It's actually got an LCD screen back here. Isn't that cool? Uh, made by Stern. Uh, you know, I was never really huge into pinball. Uh, you know, I would play it when I would see it, but just never really clicked with me until, you know, a few years ago, my son and I were actually at the airport in Providence, Rhode Island. Uh, and they had a, uh, the Munsters, you know, pinball machine there. Uh, we were both playing that, had a, a fun, a ton of fun with it. Uh, things really just started to, to click with me. Um, and uh, yeah, kind of decided there to pick one of these up. Uh, these are not cheap. Um, we'll leave it at that. Uh, and I actually, a couple years ago, wrote an article uh, that was featured on Pinside, which is the uh, you know leading website for pinball collectors. So if you want to hear more about how I came to own a Munsters, um, I'll leave a, a link to that maybe in the comments down below. Uh, Star Trek. Um, this absolutely is a pinball machine that I remember playing as a kid. I was a huge Star Trek fan growing up. Uh, I still am. You know, that uh, both the original series and all of the kind of 90s era uh, Star Trek. Um, this is a, a super pin made by Williams, kind of a you know, wider than normal width uh, for a pinball machine. Picked this up, uh, you know, during COVID. Uh, went up to, I think, um, Allentown, Pennsylvania or so. Um, pretty decent shape. You know, I would say it's a player's condition. Um, definitely not a museum piece, but plays well. And uh, yeah, who doesn't love this game? Hard one, though. Play Choice 10. So this was an interesting pickup. Uh, I was actually working on the Donkey Kong restoration um, and was, uh, I think, spray painting the top of the cabinet black and was in between coats. Was checking Craigslist. Saw this for sale for like, 200, 250, something like that. Um, New Jersey or Pennsylvania, I think. Uh, immediately contacted the seller. Uh, they responded the next morning. I was uh, out there after, I think I left work early. After work that day, picked it up. Um, it was working. Uh, I think both monitors were a little bit on the fritz. Uh, new flyback in one and a cap kit on both. And uh, we were back in action. I've picked up quite a few additional games for this. So, People think of this sort of as the arcade version of the NES, and it's got interchangeable game cards to, to swap up. Uh, and there's 10 different slots. You can have 10 games in there at once. 
Um, so yeah, this has been a lot of fun. You know, it's mostly the, the games are very similar to NES games. Um, but then, uh, had a problem. This is, you know, a two monitor, uh, cabinet. I think most of these are conversions of, uh, punch outs. So it's got the lower monitor down here, uh, where you play the game and the upper monitor has sort of, you know, information you select the game and, uh, it gives you, um, you know, instructions on how to play. Uh, lower monitor has been just getting dimmer and dimmer and dimmer, so that's going to need to be rejuvenated. We'll do that soon. And then the top monitor, so I accidentally let this run, uh, this game running for, I don't know, 48 hours or so. Uh, when I realized it was still on, came back, uh, the top monitor was sort of, you know, glitching out. Turned it off, let it rest, turn it back on. Loud pop, bad burning smell. Uh, blew the fly back. So we'll be replacing that and trying to get this uh, back to life relatively soon. Uh, and then over here, uh, Donkey Kong Jr. Cocktail Table. Uh, so got this uh, from Coin Op Warehouse in uh, Hagerstown, Maryland. So uh, uh, Lloyd's had a business for years up there where he goes and he buys out old, you know, warehouses, operators, warehouses full of old games. And then you know, brings them back, to, you know, from all over the country, brings them back to Maryland and, and sells them to, you know, collectors and people who want to restore these things. So when I got this, uh, totally not working, didn't even have a monitor, otherwise complete, you know, power cord had been cut. I got really, really fortunate to find actually a pair of uh, red tent monitors in Lloyd's warehouse that I bought from them. I got one of them working, uh, you know, sort of fixed up the, the power issues and uh, it worked great. No problems ever since. So uh, that's the collection right now. Um, out in the garage, we've got uh, a couple of projects you'll be seeing soon. I've got a dedicated Miss Pac-Man upright that will replace uh, this one here once this goes uh, to the office at work. Uh, I've also got a Missile Command cocktail uh, to bring back to life, and then a, a mystery project. So we'll, we'll see that. Um, all right, that about does it for this very first episode of Overtime Arcade. Uh, don't worry, in future videos, it'll be a lot less of me rambling and a lot more working on this stuff. Um, we'll fix up all the issues currently in the lineup, like we talked about the, uh, the Tempest and the Play Choice 10, and actually the Robotron has some sound issues, some intermittent sound issues that we'll get to the bottom of. Uh, and then we'll move on to those restoration projects eventually, the Miss Pac-Man, uh, the Missile Command, and that mystery project. So um, be sure to subscribe if you don't want to miss any of that, and I'll see you next time. Oh, 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 overtime! overtime.